Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It is Thursday. It is February 15th, 2018, and it is time to get into it. Please, when you get here, hashtag MVP in the comment section so I know you're here. We're ready. We're geared up. We're going to bring a lot of energy to you guys um, just because I get excited about uh, this. I'm so passionate about what I do, um, and the passion really has to do with every one of you that um, are finding, informa uh, finding this information useful. Um, that gives me a lot of uh, energy, and I get excited to share that. Hi, Kesey. Hi, Tyrone. Thanks for joining us. Click that share button or click like and invite at least one or two people to come in with you. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I love actually um, for um, just engaging with you guys. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Tracy. Hashtag MVP in the comment section. Let me know you're here. I'm going to invite one friend or two, however, anybody you can think of that might this might be beneficial to, because we want to make sure, as you guys know, some of you who are already are familiar with um, Rebound Your Health TV with Dr. Z. You guys know that I really love to get you guys engaged to make sure that this information doesn't just go woo. So a lot of times they're going to ask you questions. I want you to jump right in. Um, you might have questions. I'm going to ask you questions just to make sure that at the end of the day, when you leave this broadcast, you know a little bit more than you did before, or you're going to remember it next time because you're going to participate, you're going to engage, and you're going to put that MVP behavior right in here, right? Hi, Tracy. Thanks for going, coming. Thanks for coming. Hi, cousin. Um, as like I said, hashtag MVP. I see you guys already putting it in there. I'm so excited for you guys. Um, again, we're going to get into this in about 90 seconds. Just get a few more people some time to get into the broadcast. Maybe you're putting away something or just put another bite in your mouth, whatever it is. We won't keep you long. I want to give it, hit it hard. I'm going to give you five um, extremely um, important for you guys to understand these five, I'm going to call it um, points, uh, five uh, most effective and latest treatments. Um, and some of them are uh, tried and true, and some of them you may not have heard about or you're not sure how to get um, inf more information about it. You're not sure where to go or how to um, get help in and that's what I'm going to hear be here to tell you guys about today. So go ahead and invite a couple of friends. It should be like a little a little tag thing below for you to invite someone or uh, invite someone or share the uh, the broadcast so they can join in with us. Hi, Jamila. Mwah. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Please click share or invite somebody. Um, so make sure that we all are going to get into this um, this topic together. Hashtag MVP when you get in here. OK. Um, you guys are going to see me looking down because I have another page. I'm trying something out with this technology thing. I'm actually pretty savvy, but sometimes it's a little difficult when I'm trying to share to more than one page because I do have more than one page um, to make sure that everybody who wanted to participate in this evening broadcast that they can. OK, so we're going to give it maybe 60 more seconds and we're going to jump right into it. How y'all feeling today, though? How is your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? How's the week been going? How are you feeling about your MVP status? How are you feeling about that? Are we engaging? Are we making ourselves the most valuable persons in our in our life? Hi, Nicole. Mwah. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Hi, Ramona. Welcome to the broadcast. Mwah. When you get in here, hashtag MVP. Let us know you're here. Let us get, let me feel your energy. Um, it gives me so excited when I feel that energy coming right off the screen. And um, I know you guys are here with me to get in it. I saw that. Thank you. Mwah. Um, go ahead and click share or invite somebody that you think this might be helpful for. And this is not just for athletes, guys. This joint pain applies to so many, many people around the world, quite frankly. And I actually have um, internationally had to basically help others around the world with this information, as well as nationally. Right. We know what's going on with as relates to joint pain. Um, that can be shoulder. It can be neck. There's joints in our neck. There's joints in our back, believe it or not. Uh, shoulders, hips, knees, ankles, even our three fingers. So this might, you might be an athlete, you might not be an athlete, but this information can be helpful, or at least you can pass it on, right? I see a okay, I'm feeling awesome. I'm working on making myself a hashtag MVP. Yes. You don't know how that does a heart good. Um, I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of each and every one of you. And I'm actually excited to share some information with you. And I'm going to give that information to you in about 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, before we get to it, we want to make sure that everybody's here and ready. You got some energy. We're ready to get into it. Y'all know me. I'm going to jump right into it and out. I Don't let me get sidetracked today, y'all. I'm trying to um, share this to my uh, Facebook page. 
and hopefully it'll work. If not, we are gonna share this information, right? Our MVP tribe is always in action and I always appreciate that about you guys. Let's see, can I get it from here? We're gonna try, probably not. <laughs> And that's completely okay. But let's jump into the high tide. Tell Kevin to come on in. Tell Kevin to come on into the broadcast tide. Thank you for joining us. Mwah. Um, I think this information might be helpful, or you can pass it along. Hi, Tucson. Mwah. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Hashtag MVP in the comment section when you're in here. So everybody in the tribe, MVP tribe, knows that you're here. And tell us again what the MVP stands for. Most valuable person. Most valuable person in your life, okay? So let me jump right into it. You guys know me. I am Dr. Zarina, also known as Dr. Z, your sports medicine and integrative pain management physician, here to help you rebound your health, here to help you gain pain freedom, here in the mind, the body, and the soul, from the inside out and the outside in. And I do this through my speaking engagements, through authoring, through platforms like this, um, as well as my concierge practice, my medical practice, and coaching programs. So at the end of this broadcast, I'll give you some information about how you can reach me there. But the news that I wanted to share with you guys was I'm also opening, um, and it will be a closed group, but you'll be able to search it, the MVP Lifestyle. That will be a group for us to engage with each other more so I can share with you guys those who really are really about that life, right? Really actually trying to really, really obtain that MVP, that most valuable person, okay? Hi, Dr. Doan Mwah. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. You rock. ADHD ambassador internationally. Y'all go check out Dr. Dawn. If you don't know, better ask somebody. Dr. Dawn is amazing, and I appreciate your support, Dr. Dawn. Absolutely. And then at the end of the day, I want you guys to log into that MVP, the MVP Lifestyle on Facebook. That's the group. The MVP Lifestyle. Search that, and I'll be able to admit you into that. But this is really, guys, for those who are, like I said, you're truly seeking to be the MVP. Okay, mentally, the most valuable person of your mind, the most valuable person of your body, the most valuable person of your spirit. Those are the things that we're going to be engaging in. And if you're about that life, then you definitely want to join the Facebook group. Okay, and I'll repeat that at the end of the at the end of this um, broadcast. But thank you for joining and welcome. Come on in, invite somebody so they can jump into this information as well. Okay, so you guys know why you're here, right? This is Rebound Health TV with Dr. Z. I'm Dr. Z. My Dr. Zarina, also known as Dr. Z, and we're going to jump in joint pain why did I choose this topic I probably actually covered this topic slightly differently in the past some months ago but it is a topic that continuously gets repeated and repeated and repeated um, because it's people are suffering with joint pain and they start to feel a little bit lost how many of you feel lost with your joint pain or you know somebody who does they kind of feel like okay they told me this they told me that I still feel lost I'm still in pain or they told me, I'm not a surgical candidate, so what else am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to take narcotics for the rest of my life? How many can relate to that or you know somebody who's feeling that way? Um, what's another one? You just feel like for the rest of your life you have to pop pills to get by. And even then, you don't really feel like you're living fully. You know, you feel like you're just, get, again, getting by. And that's not what we're about, right? MVPs, we're about that living fully out loud, unapologetically, no hesitation, and we don't apologize for it, right? And then when we do that, we're able to truly feel, feel our life's potential, right? Our fullest potential, and also give back to others. But you can't give. A lot of you who are listening to my voice right now, you're here because you kind of probably, I can relate to you and you can relate to me. At the end of the day, I too was that person and I have to remind myself and stay in task as well to not allow myself to be so selfless that I don't take care of myself. I absolutely can't be who I want to be. Y'all know who I want to be? I want to be the most valuable person in my life so I can be the most valuable asset, so to speak, to my family, to my community, to my patients. OK, that's what's so important to me. That's what I'm passionate about. And I feel like everybody deserves that. And you can, too, have that for your life. You deserve it. It just takes some effort and some guidance. And that's what I'm here to do. And I'm so excited to do it. You guys ready? Hi, Renita. Hi, Antoine. Welcome to the broadcast. Hashtag MVP when you get in. Try let's support and love on each other. And we're going to jump right into it. So number one. So I just told you why I chose this topic, right? So many of you have experienced this. And again, raise of hands. You can do an emoji hand um, if you can relate to any of those things that I just talked about. Um, but it comes over and over again. And a lot of times I'll ask you guys through this broadcast, and I'll continue to do that. If you feel like there's topics that you would love for me to cover, or you just need a little bit more information because you wanted my take on it, don't hesitate to visit me at Dr. Zarina. That's D-R-Z-A-R-I-N-A-H 
on Facebook, okay? That's www.facebook.com forward slash D-R-Z-A-R-I-N-A-H. And you can inbox me topics that you would love for me to cover. This happens to be a topic that comes up over and over and over again. So I tried to break it down today in five simple terms or five simple um, points that we're going to get into. So y'all ready? I'm ready. Get to ready. Get your fingers, get your finger, um, your fingers ready because number one, and you guys are going to put this in the comment section because the other tribe members, other um, MVPs are going to join this. And when they can hear it, see it, that's when this information really sticks in. And at least you'll know how to navigate it once this uh, broadcast is over. Okay. You ready? Okay. Number one, the first one is conservative, okay? Of course, we, a lot of you, most of you actually are familiar with this. Hi, I'm Punty. Welcome for joining us. Welcome to the broadcast. Please click share and hashtag MVP when you get into the room. Okay, conservative. A lot of you, like I said, most people actually are familiar with conservative therapy or conservative treatments. And some of the ones that I will highlight today really have to do with some that you're kind of used to. And don't forget, you can ask me questions along the way. I'm going to try to interject uh, myself and answer these questions as we go along. But if I don't get to them in the broadcast, I actually go through them after the broadcast to try to answer them as well. And can also um, actually schedule a one-on-one -on -one session, a free consultation, which is a discovery session, 30-minute discovery session, if you need more, okay? And I'll show it in the link at the end of this video how you can contact me to get that information, okay? So number one is conservative. And what is conservative um, treatment? Essentially for joint pain. Conservative treatment for joint pain, and this is kind of regardless of um, if it's arthritis or if it's from an injury, um, but uh, in general, a lot of times, ice or ice heat alternate, alternating ice heat, excuse me, can be very, very helpful. Okay, so that's number one. I like to call ice um, nature's anti-inflammatory, which is why it's like a really, really good go-to when it's acute or subacute pain. Um, what is acute and subacute pain? Some of you may already know this, but if you don't, if you've been following me, you know it. Um, if it's less than that three months, then that's essentially consider acute pain. If it's in that three to six, then you're looking at subacute pain. And then when you're getting past six months of pain, then that's in the chronic pains. And we want to keep you away from there. That's a strong, strong passion and goal of mine to help people not even get introduced to chronic pain. Right. So ice can help with that. Oftentimes, the, the idea and the point of ice is to decrease swelling, okay? And if you decrease swelling, believe it or not, that's also going to decrease the pain because the swelling in itself with the inflammatory markers that come about um, are the ones that are responsible for that pain quite often. So ice can be helpful. Why heat sometimes? Sometimes, believe it or not, some people will tell you, stay away from heat, stay away from heat if it's an acute um, type of pain in your joints. The reason why sometimes this can be helpful, and again, with the guidance of a a uh, medical professional that can kind of help and guide you is the muscles that support that structure, to support that joint, sometimes have some spasming or some pain in that. And the moist heat in particular, okay, y'all know how I am, those who've been following me, not dry heat. What is dry heat? Dry heat is a heating pad, essentially, right? That's what dry heat is to me. Moist heat is when you take a, a rag, you wet it, and maybe you microwave it for 45 seconds, you take it out, and that's moist heat. Why? Because that penetrates the muscles to get into those muscle fibers a little bit better and also helps, um, with that, going to help relax those muscles a lot better. Miles and Maxie love Dr. Z. <laughs> Mwah, and Dr. Z loves you. Mwah. Okay? So that's with that um, ice and heat alternative. Another conservative treatment that we sometimes use, I'm not a huge, huge fan of it, unless it's acute, okay? And typically, sometimes in chronic pain situations, which is brace, okay? Somebody write that down for me. Brace temporarily. Put that in the comment section. Bracing temporarily. And that temporarily part is the, um, um, is the most important word of that, the caveat attack. And the reason why I say temporarily, because oftentimes what people do is they begin to use the brace as a crutch. How many of y'all have been guilty of that? You don't even ask us, meaning the doctors, about it. I see people in the um, in the CVS section or whatever, and, um, well, it doesn't mean they didn't ask their doctor. But a lot of times you don't. You just put it on because it sounds good. And oftentimes you don't realize that you could be doing more harm than good, which is why I really, really want to stress that one. Temporarily, 
bracing. Put that in the hat in the comment section for your other MVP tribe members to make sure that they know we're saying temporarily. And then when they watch this video, it makes more sense. But bracing temporarily. Thank you, Beverly. New MVP behavior. Really, really love that. That's what I'm talking about. MVP action. Um, the reason, again, it could be doing more harm than good. Why could it be doing more harm than good? The reason is because bracing, when you do it long term, you're actually going to um, further weakening of the muscles that support that joint. And that's the very opposite thing that we want to happen. We want you to be able to build those muscles, but then the joint itself becomes uh, starts to rely on that brace, if you will, and you're not getting any strengthening to the joint or the supporting structures of that joint. So you're going to potentially suffer. So you really want to be doing that under the guidance of a specialist who understands bracing and if that is appropriate because it's not always appropriate guys for every situation okay bracing temporarily hi stacy thank you for joining us please um welcome 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 click share like invite and uh, hopefully this information can be uh, helpful to you and others okay so that was conservative okay so that's number one technically number one out of the five is conservative treatment and i just gave you some examples of those conservative treatments okay so that's really really important and then number two is homeopathic um, this is something I feel like a lot of people don't, it just doesn't cross their minds. Actually, on a show of hands, in any form, how many of you have actually participated or engaged in homeopathic medicine or homeopathic um, treatments? Um, I would love to hear from you. Let me know if that is something you've ever experienced. And also, I would love to know if it helps you or not, okay? Um, the, in my particular specialty, again, you guys know I'm sports medicine, integrative pain management. So I'm dealing with... Um, a lot of times, neurological, musculoskeletal um, issues and functional issues, um, disabilities, quote unquote. I, you know, I don't really like that word, um, but for the sake of conversation, you guys know what I'm talking about. So when I use homeopathic remedies or homeopathic treatments, I'm usually trying to influence the nerve or influence the joint or influence the muscle. Um, so on and so forth. So that's another type of treatment that actually can be done that actually can be really, really, really helpful. And some of you out there, um, and again, what I love about what I do is it's not one size fits all. At the end of the day, you all are uniquely different. And so I can't try to throw, which unfortunately sometimes that does happen in our medical field. It's like, okay, try this and try this, try steroid, try NSAIDs, um, try narcotic, and if none of those work, go to surgery. So that's like four things. And then many people, I can't tell you how many, like thousands of people that I've treated over the course of my entire uh, career, that's really where it stops for them. And not unless they come in contact with me or someone like me who says, no, my toolbox has to be a little bit fuller than that. And I want you to know that there are actually more tools in the toolbox than those four options. And that's what this conversation is about. Does that sound good? <laughs> Yeah, I get started. So homeopathic treatments is actually something that can be helpful as well. Again, shoot out questions if you have any questions. So homeopathic injections, okay? And there also can be other things such as um, um, in the oils, in the forms of oils. And even sometimes we combine compounds where I utilize um, my special pharmacist, because not every pharmacy will do these, uh, where they combine certain compounds for me that can help impact and improve um, your pain symptomatology um, that is not in the narcotic family, right? That sounds great. Because if you don't have to have this addictive or dependency on a medication where you feel like if you don't have it, you can't function, or if you do have it, you still can't function, right? That's extremely important to me. So number two, number two, homeopathic. Somebody put that in the comment section. Let's go MVP action. Number one was conservative. And number two is homeopathic. So put that in there for me. Starting now, what did you think about turmeric? Yes, I love turmeric. Great question. Turmeric is kind of like popular now, right? Um, but we in the field have been offering or suggesting, recommending it for many, many, many years in a integrative world, so to speak. Um, in pain management, even if you're not an integrative pain management uh, physician, those of our uh, traditional uh, traditional physicians who are treating pain, many of them are increasingly understanding the benefits as well. And quite frankly, it's been around and known benefits, like factual, not like, you know, this is like evidence-based medicine that supports turmeric um, as a uh, formidable, extremely effective, even that over Motrin, 
right? And we, most of us run to Motrin, but you could actually run to turmeric. So that was a great question. I love that. I love that. That's a great question. So number one was conservative. And yes, Carol, I see your MVP action. Number two is homeopathic, okay? That means that these are different types of injections that are not as traditional as they kind of fold, um, uh, they're not in the fold of steroids, okay? They're not in the fold of that. They're more quote unquote alternative injection therapies. But some of you had adverse reactions to steroids. So when someone tells you, no, you can't have steroids, you're kind of like, uh oh, what do I do now? And some of our physicians are not all of us, are, um, all of them, you know, not every pain management is um, trained in the same way. So my whole goal here is to um, work with other physicians. It's all about a team approach as well. This is not necessarily like, this or that, you versus, no. In medical field, we're a team. We're a team. Y'all know I'm a team player. At the end of the day, that's what this is about. So we're going to have to make sure that we're working as a team. But sometimes they're not trained in those things. So that's where this comes to play. And that's where Dr. Zarina comes into play. Or other physicians like myself. So happy that you're about to join as Kuka <laughs> All right. And um, so, yeah, that was a homeopathic. OK, so that was number two. Number three is rehab, physical therapy. Where that comes into play. Those of you who have seen me in the office um, and some of you actually see me virtually as well. Um, you'll know I'll get up and I'm a demonstrate. I'm that doctor that literally gets on the floor. You know, I'm really hands on. So sometimes few of you may say, oh, you know, I tried rehab. I tried this and that. What it comes down to when it comes to rehab and physical therapy is that sometimes it's your technique. Sometimes you need a little bit more guidance about making sure that you're isolating or not isolating certain muscles so that we can make sure that you get the biggest bang for your, for your buck, so to speak, the biggest bang for your functional goals. Um, so sometimes that's important, um, but you can't necessarily do one out without the other. You guys know me when I talk about it all the time. It's about rebounding your health, reaching your pain freedom goals from the inside out, from the outside in, which means you can't just do one, you know, one or the other. To reach our fullest potential functionally, um, mentally, physically, or spiritually for that matter, um, we absolutely have to go from the inside out and the outside in. You have to address both. And that's where the rehab and physical therapy comes into play. Does that Make it to number three. Number three, somebody put that in the comment section for the MVPs that are going to be follow us um, further. Rehab, rehabilitation. Rehabilitation is extremely important. That's our number three. Hi, Danielle. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope this information is going to be useful to you or someone else. Go ahead and click like or share, and hopefully somebody else can join us. All right? So that's number three. MVP action. Come on, guys. Let me see you guys do that. Number three is rehab. Rehab. So that, again, when it comes to joints, there's actually exercises that can be very extremely important and helpful uh, for your long-term, long-term, not just short-term uh, goals when it comes to um, making sure that you're not having, um, that you're minimizing, reducing, or eliminating your pain and improving your function. Because that's, to me, it's not just about, I want to be out of pain. Those, again, if you have seen me, you guys know that I'm not just interested in reducing or eliminating your pain. I'm actually I'm really, really more interested in improving your function. How do you live your life, your quality of life? That's what gives me passion. Because if I can reduce your pain and minimize your pain and eliminate your pain, then I'm going to help improve your quality of life. That's what this is about. We're about living out loud, right? Fully and unapologetically. Thank you. Yes, I see all that MVP action. Dr. Dawn is in it. Carol's in it. Maxie's in it. Jamila's in it. Y'all are MVPs. I love it. All the way in action. Get it. Get it. High five each other. Virtual high fives. That's number three. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to need some water in a second. But that is number three. So again, we have exercises that we do for our neck because there are little joints of our neck and our back, our shoulders. That's extremely important. I would say the number one complaint that I get with people who have said, I did therapy, Dr. Hood, and I failed. Or they said I failed therapy. Or I did Dr. Hood um, some um, rehab, but it didn't help me. Two of the two main reasons that it didn't help you are, are these. One, you stopped. Once the rehab or the insurance stopped paying for it, you stopped. Even though they may have given you um, exercises to go home, you stopped doing them. And the thing I always try to say is the thing that got you better is the thing that's going to keep you better. Does that make sense? Somebody put that. That's a good hashtag. Hashtag. <laughs> The thing that got you better is the thing that's going to keep you better. So at the end of the day, you have to keep that maintenance going because you, that's how you got better. So you want to have a maintenance um, regimen in place. A lot of you stopped doing it. You say, oh, yeah, I did get better, somewhat better, but then it came back. And then I usually ask, did you continue your therapy? Did you continue your exercises at home? And the answer is usually no. <laughs> okay, so that's number one reason. And then other two reasons is 
your technique actually wasn't solid. And I love to do certain tests in the office. Those of you come see me. Um, uh, you, and you can find me again at www.facebook.com forward slash Dr. Rizarina, D-R-Z-A-R-I-N-A-H. And you'll find how you can um, find us um, to make an appointment uh, if, if you are in the Atlanta area. Um, but I do these certain uh, assessments that really, really challenge certain muscles that gives me a lot of information without really, um, without taking too long really to do that particular assessment. It tells me a whole lot about your core, about whatever joint or ligament even that's impacting the issue. So that's extremely important. So that's number three. Number three was rehabilitation. I see you guys MVP action. Yes. So number four is, um, number four is, uh, surgery. And I'm not a surgeon, um, but I have to know this information, right? As a sports medicine doctor, clearly. Uh, but surgery is an option for some people. And um, I consider it, and I feel like even surgeons do, the whole idea is that it should be the last resort, right? It should be the last resort. So number four, number four, MVP action, please put down surgery. Surgery can be an option for some people. Oh, shoot, Pat should swing by. She's there at the AP. <laughs> Yes, surgery. So at the end of the day, um, surgery can be an option. But again, we want it to be the last, your last resort, not your first resort or even second. You really want to exhaust the, those op the other options, which is why I'm discussing these other things that you're going to be doing, okay, that you want to do prior to re um, resort resulting to surgery. And for when it comes to knees, um, there's all kinds. Sometimes it could be a labral tear. It could be a ligament tear. It could be a tendon tear, right? Um, not all tears and ligaments are created equal, and not all of them are severe enough to require surgery. So sometimes what happens, and I and actually I would say the bulk of my patients that I see um, that are looking for some other options is really because they were they did therapy, they did steroid injections, they were on narcotics or still on narcotics. Hi, Dr. Yvette. Wow, thank you for coming. Welcome to the broadcast. Click share, share, share. Blah, blah, blah. Hopefully this information is helpful. Um, they tried all of those things. They tried, again, therapy. They tried narcotics. They tried steroid injections. Um, but then the doctor told them they're not a candidate for surgery for one reason or another. Sometimes it could be your cardiovascular health that's impacting it. And a shout out to February is the month we're still in it. This is heart health. Um, that's a whole nother topic, but I will share um, some information for you guys. And I have been sharing actually some information for you guys, especially women and especially women of color um, that is the leading cause of death for us. So sometimes the cardiovascular reasons why you can't be a candidate for uh, surgery. Sometimes it's our weight that makes us not a candidate for surgery. Sometimes you know, our, like obesity or morbid obesity can be impacting our ability to have surgery. Um, and sometimes it's just not severe enough. The issue is not severe enough for surgery. Either one, bone on bird, bone on bone. Yes, that can be really, really tough, Dr. Yvette. Um, or the, who's the, Dr. Yvette and Danielle. Yes, bone on bone. Ugh. Yes. Ugh. But my point to that is sometimes even when you're not a surgical candidate yet or at all, or some of you just want to avoid it. You're like, I'm a surgical candidate, but I don't want it. I've treated many patients like that as well. Um, and then sometimes I still have to say I recommend surgery. Um, so I'm not about no surgery at all costs. Sometimes, and you guys know me, if I say you need surgery, those who've been with me, you know that it is at that point, right? And sometimes that's just what it is because depending on the severity of the situation. So I do recommend surgery sometimes, or I recommend you to go see an orthopedic surgeon specialist to get a second opinion, a third opinion. I'm never offended by fourth and fifth opinions ever because it's your body. What I talk about, most valuable person, at the end of the day, it's not worth it to rely on one person or another. I'm extremely confident in, in, in uh, my abilities, my talent, and my knowledge. Extremely confident in it. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean that I know every single thing and I don't do all things. Okay? I know what I know and I do what I do and I do it well. <laughs> all right? So that's extremely important. Fear. Oh, expound on that. Please help me expound on that, Carol. That's a good point. Fear sometimes keeps people away from that as well. Hi, Anna. Welcome, 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 welcome. Mwah. Fear is a good point, too, and that also um, can impact people's ability to, um, in terms of avoiding surgery, right? That could definitely be it. But I have treated patients um, with the different services and pro um, services that we have, with the, either they were a surgical candidate, but they were scared to do, or they just don't want to, or they're want severe enough to get it, but they still like, I have pain. Okay. So they said I'm not a surgical candidate, but I still have pain. What am I supposed to do with that? 
And that's my point. I don't want you to feel hopeless. Don't feel hopeless because there is still hope. There are options out there. And the last um, topic, I mean, the last number five that I'm going to get to is the meat of all this because it's the thing I'm most excited about. Why? Because it's the most underutilized um, type of treatment. A lot of people are suffering because they just don't know or because the doctor don't doesn't um, do them. They're not trained in it or they're a physician that they're currently seeing just doesn't know enough information about it to even offer or make a recommendation. Okay. So number four with surgery. Yes, sometimes surgery is necessary. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. I'm looking into this. Sometimes it is. It just is. Um, yes, you do. Texas. Yes, you do. What What I do? <laughs> I don't even know what the yes you do is. Texas in the house. Yeah. Detroit represent. <laughs> okay, y'all do it all. Uh, what do you call it? Roll call? I love it. I love the energy. Okay, so that was number four is surgery. Sometimes it's necessary. But I want you to know, if you're not a surgical candidate, yes, there's still hope for you. And there's options. And I'm going to talk about that in number five. And if you are a surgical candidate, but you want to avoid surgery, you just kind of like, no, I want to try something else before I make that decision. I've done that as well. And I've helped people avoid surgery. I actually have. And I'm very humbly proud of that. Um, but it wasn't just me, right? It's a, This MVP team here is about, I'm like the point guard. And at the end of the day, I'm, you're, the, you're in the MVP of our team. So we're going to be as good as you give me, all right? And that's what I'm excited about. But I'm going to be there 110%. I'm always going to give you that. You know what you know and you do what you do. <laughs> you know it. That's right. And number five, but not least, I left number five as number five because, um, again, I'm most excited about it. Why? In particular, because it's the most underutilized, I feel like, in the, in the field of pain management. It is increasing. It is increasing. There's increasingly more people, physicians who are getting trained or they're not trained. They know how to refer you to somebody. Um, they're still not there yet, um, which is um, integrative treatments, okay? And the integrative treatments um, that we offer um, and other physicians in this field that our integrated pain management physicians offer are um, examples are, um, I just went blank. Uh, uh, <laughs> Regenerative injection therapy, sorry about that other part. Regenerative injection therapies, um, extremely helpful. Acupuncture even, I've actually utilized that in the past or referred to people who I um, trust in the field as it relates to that. Acupuncture can be very helpful, um, very helpful actually. And there's a lot of studies to support that. I've even done cupping. Cupping not necessarily directly to the joint, but what we identify and find out is that um, cupping, um, I mean, muscles that uh, support the joint structure if there are issues in that, sometimes um, when you need more blood flow to the area, you need to you have a lot of tension or restrictions in those muscles, then I help mobilize that through certain again integrative practices, which is number five. Somebody write that down. Y'all already in action. Integrative number five, MVP action. I see that I love it. You guys are so giving me so much energy, so much love. Yes, cupping. Jamila question mark cupping. Okay, cupping to expound on that. Or maybe I just did. Maybe that was the link. But yes, cupping can be very helpful in terms of supporting the structures that support that joint. And that could be a great adjunctive um, uh, treatment and therapy that we do offer and some other physicians offer to help mobilize that. Another thing is the grasping technique. And again, I can expound on that maybe in a different topic as well. But this is also an integrated uh, technique. Um, you did that on me. It totally worked. Oh, awesome. I'm so glad you got better. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, and then uh, we talked about acupuncture, cupping. Um, what else do we have? Osteopathic manipulation. So some of people, and I actually probably need to do a topic on this. Well, you guys are giving me so much ideas, so many ideas, excuse me. Um, osteopathic manipulation treatments are manual, okay, where I help mobilize either the, the lymphatic system even, um, uh, releasing some of the structures that are around some of your nerves as well that can be impacting your pain as well as the joint and the muscles. So there's different treatments. Some people say, oh, that's some kind of like chiropractor, kind of in the same lane, but not really exactly, you know, the same, they're not exactly equal, but there are a lot of similarities. And again, a different day, different topic. That'd be a great topic maybe that I can expound on on another day to give you an idea of what are the differences between them and what are the similarities, okay? So that's another one, OMT, yes, OMT. And then uh, regenerative injection therapies. That one's huge um, because what that does is basically 
helps the body continue the healing process. The way I like to explain regenerative injection therapies and examples of this are PRP, um, which is platelet-rich plasma um, injections, as well as prolotherapy, as well as neurotherapy. Sometimes the nerves that support or uh, supply that joint is like really, really inflamed. And so how many of you can relate to touching the knee, even if it's not deep pressure, you have some pain? If that is you, then you possibly could be a candidate for what we call neuroprotherapy. And this, again, is not a steroid injection. This is actually something that's literally designed to regenerate, regenerate, okay? So we're not just masking. We're actually repairing. That's the whole point of that, hence the name regenerative injection therapies. And what they use is a natural solution and or um, your own platelets where they derive your platelets, spin them down in concentrated form, and put that to the injured tissue. In particular, oftentimes, it's going to be in the joint space or at the what I call in thesis, which is essentially where that tendon or ligament attaches to the bone at an interface. Why is that a big deal? That's a big deal because um, that's where a lot of the blood supply should be happening. But what happens is when you get injured or say you just have a chronic issue, say you worked in a manual labor kind of thing for many years, or maybe even your desk, my desk workers, my desk MVPs out there, some of you are suffering because you're in positions for prolonged periods of time. And I have to help guide you out of that. Again, my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, I actually offer a lot of detail about that where we're going to get you through and, um, the, with the coaching program to get you to the point where you completely know you're a complete MVP of your entire world um, as it relates to your mind, your mental, your physical. So if you do have jobs like that that are kind of part of the issue, part of the culprit, part of the thing that's feeding into your pain, then I'm not going to necessarily tell you to quit your job, but I'm going to give you strategies, sure five strategies, um, and educate you on what you can do to still be productive at work, but not with pain, right? So that's the idea behind that. And I'll give you that information at the end of this video. So, at the end of this broadcast, excuse me. Um, yes, desk arthritis. Yes, Dr. Yvette, you know, right? And I, myself, this thing right here, actually, <laughs> stethoscope, I should have a stethoscope syndrome. I should like probably write a paper about that because even physicians, we are increasingly doing more and more um, typing and paperwork, unfortunately, which is probably why I like to be so physical in my exam rooms, kind of break it up a little bit um, and squats and carrying on. Y'all see me in the um, halls. <laughs> But literally, because at the end of the day, if I don't keep moving and you kind of find yourself, you start to have pain in your neck. And it's going to be something as light as this. But if you're doing it chronically over and over again, that can really, really give you pain. And nobody has time for that, right? Nobody has time for that. So absolutely. So when it comes to regenerative injection therapies, like I said, where it meets that interface, that is what helps increase the blood supply. What we know as scientists and as medical people is that the tendons, when you see them on pictures, they look kind of white and the, and the um, muscles look kind of beefy red. There's a reason before that. They were designed that way really for that tensile structure, the tensile strength to be mostly in that tendon. Okay, but if it, but it, and because of that, it has less blood supply. But when it does have less blood supply, that means that a lot of times it heals like 70% or heals 80%, maybe 85, and then it kind of stops. Why? Because after it gets past that three month mark, um, or even sometimes earlier, even before three months, the healing process kind of gets goes to a halt. The reason it comes to a halt, because now the actually the slight inflammatory process that should be happening halted. Is, that, is this making sense to you guys? So if that inflammatory process that brings blood supply and growth factors and all of those uh, reparative, reparative cells to the area to heal, but it kind of halted, then what do we do? Narcotics don't make them come back, right? Narcotics doesn't do that. Steroids doesn't do that. Steroids decreases um, um, inflammation. That's the point of it. And when you come into that chronic stage or the subacute stage, a lot of times inflammation is actually not the issue. The issue is your ligament structures, the laxity, the issues in the tissue structures, that actually is the issue. So how do you impact that? The narcotics doesn't do that, right? Um, the, um, which you just said, uh, and steroid injections doesn't do that. Uh, Motrin doesn't do that. So what can I do, Dr. Zarina? What can I do? What you can do is identify a position in your area 
um, that does and is trained and knows and understands regenerative injection therapies. Because regenerative injection therapies is going to allow you to go from that 70%, 60%, 50% of repair to oftentimes 85 and greater. And I've definitely humbly and, and gratefully, I can say, um, hum, uh, have helped people uh, reach those long-term goals. It's a blessing and a curse. I actually was talking to my uh was it my father somebody i was talking to somebody and i said the blessing and the curse and what i do is when i they get better they get better i taught them everything i know i treated them to the maximum ability so that when they get better they don't have to keep coming back for steroid injections right you don't have to keep coming back for that script the percocet or whatever the case may be because i'm in the game for long-term relief that's what this is about okay and i provide those non-surgical options at rebound integrative medical group um, through uh, Rebound Sports and Rehab Department to get you to your next goal, to get you that long-term relief. Regenerative Injection Therapies, thank you. I'll study up on this. Absolutely. Reach out. I can do some more talks about that. That was number five. I'm going to go to the questions now. Actually, I'm going to repeat the type five that we just talked about, and then I'll go to the questions. Number one, MVPs, was conservative treatment. Number two was um, homeopathic injections or homeopathic treatments, not always injections, actually homeopathic treatments. Number three was physical therapy or rehabilitation. Okay. Number four was surgery. Okay. Sometimes you need surgery. And number five was, um, uh, integrative treatments such as regenerative injection therapy, so acupuncture cupping. So these are extremely important for you to understand that because when I bless you, if you were by a raise of hands, again, hashtag, I mean, emoji hands, that not all of you, when you go to your orthopedic doctor or your family medicine doctor, not to their fault, they just don't know to offer you anything outside of what they were trained to do. My mentor, I'll give him a shout out, Dr. Patrick Leary and Dr. Greg Coppola, they used to say, um, you can only diagnose uh, what you know, right? If you don't know about it, you can't diagnose it. And uh, that was my Really, it put fire under me. It put fire under me to not be a one-trick pony doctor. It put fire under me to say, to call myself an expert, to say doctor of anything, which is the top level of my field, I absolutely need to broaden and continue to be a student forever, a lifetime student of making sure that everything I'm bringing my patients is gonna be the top of the top and the best and most effective. So not say, oh, this medication didn't work so are you're done or this, this didn't work so you're done. I didn't wanna be that because you deserve more than that, right? I want to be the most, want you to be the most valuable person in your life. In order for you to do that, who you team up with as physicians is extremely important. And that's what I'm here for. I'm so excited because um, that's what brings me passion. I really, really get excited about that. So I see some more MVP action happening there. Let me go to the questions. Really go to the questions. Regenerative injection therapy, integrative and treatments, cupping, acupuncture, osteopathic treatment. Yes, and regenerative injection. Da Beverly, Nurse Beverly, you are the bomb. Thank you so much. That's some real MVP action. Tribe here, guys, MVPs that are on here, or you're going to watch this later. That's going to be extremely helpful, okay? Um, um, these notes that all these MVPs have been taking for you guys, that's what that's about. That's that love, and that's what MVPs do. We show love, we give love, and that just comes right back to us. Anything we radiate is going to come right back to you. So radiate that light, radiate that love. Smile, it's charitable. You know, even if you don't feel great, convince yourself that you do. I always tell my children when they wake up, I say, um, to them, each of them, uh, each one of them, I say, choose happy. Choose happy. It's a choice. It is a choice. Doesn't mean that suffering doesn't happen. Doesn't mean that we all have bad days. But I promise you, gratitude and when you choose happy, it just completely transforms your day. It means transform your 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 whole day. But when that happens, you also have the ability and the op and the um light to then help transform somebody else. And that's huge. That's huge. That's what that conversation I have all the time about the inside out and the outside in, right? Our pain freedom has to happen in that direction, inside out, outside in. It's not just one-sided, it's multifactorial, and that's what I'm here to help you guys do. So I'm so excited. So I'm gonna, if I don't, you guys don't have any questions, I'm gonna end here. How often, oh, there's a question. How often can you have fluid removed from the knee or steroid injections done? That is another great question. You're on the questions today, and these are all awesome. So first of all, for the fluid removed on the knee, technically you can have it removed a lot, but there's a caveat to that. Meaning that if you have fluid that continue to um, build up on the knee, um, that's kind of a conservative thing to keep pulling the, the um, fluid off. And what that is is symptomatically helping you because if you pull the fluid off the joint, then obviously you have less pressure in that small joint, 
which means you're going to have um, less pain every time I pull it off. However, there's a reason for the flu. Keep building up. So that's really what I'm about. Those, again, who see me in the office or you're part of my coaching programs, I'm about the root cause. What is the root cause of that um, fluid building up in the knee in the first place? Let's get to the root cause of that. So that's the answer to that particular part of that question. And then as it relates to how many uh, or steroid injections can you have? So there are guidelines for those steroid injections. Most insurances kind of follow what Medicare does. And I don't want to get into all that insurance stuff too much. But essentially, um, usually no more than three a year. And then if there's a little, little bit of steroids, sometimes they'll do a little more often. What I like to do is I might interject. Sometimes I'll do steroids in the office. Again, I usually only do it for acute situations because what the studies show us, um, and it is a bit controversial, but this, again, um, what we know as science, you can't, you can't trump science, like, like facts are facts. What steroids are meant to do is decrease the inflammation, where a lot of times, again, when you get to that um, later issue of subacute and chronic issue, it's not really inflammation. It's the disruptive of the anatomy, the ligaments, the tendons, um, the supporting structures of that joint. That's really the issue. And unless and until you treat that and you repair that, you're going to continue to have the issues. And steroids just doesn't treat that. And matter of fact, there have been a lot of studies that support and now really strong evidence that supports steroids over time. When you keep getting steroids in the same place, that can actually weaken the area. OK, you guys need to know that. And physicians know that. And actually, a lot of my colleagues do let you know that um, they let you know. So they also are held by certain guidelines to not do it too often. And then some doctors out there do do it a little bit too often. It can even have start to have discoloration in your skin. I don't know if any of you guys experienced that, um, but that's extremely important for you to kind of know. So steroid injections can happen a little bit more frequently. I mean, can happen. But again, it depends on the dosage. It depends on the joint. It depends on um sometimes even insurance um but i again my practice is usually an acute subacute area stage and then i also have natural plant-based and homeopathic based injections that can actually help do the same thing without the side effects of the steroids and a lot of my patients respond very well to that and that's really not an issue some insurances pay for that one some insurances don't okay so Another, I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, totally reach out to me um, again in my inbox at Dr. Zarino on Facebook, and I'll fully um, try to answer that question a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, insurance doesn't want to pay for regenerative therapies. Why? Workers comp, good question. Workers' compensation uh, cases generally will pay for them. So that's an insurance kind of thing. But you're right. The major, like, commercial, I guess they call them commercial insurances, they typically don't yet. Um, but I do suspect that that will happen in the future. When is the future? I don't really know. But I think the reason is why, um, and there's been a lot of studies that support this as well, but it's more like, I want to say the soap studies that support it more than it is just um, a lot of physicians in the medical field is talking about it. The reason they believe that it's not, because it's not a lot of money, right, to be made in it, not for the insurance companies. The reason, because it's fairly natural. I'm using your platelets. They can't bottle up your platelets and sell it to you, right? So the money comes off, of, you know what I mean? It's your playlist. And then the other, the other natural, um, the natural and kind of um, solutions that we use, we have dextrose solution or sodium orate and things like that. They're not really expensive solutions. And again, or even normal saline, things like that, that we combine to get the solution. And it's fairly natural and fairly like, you know, uneventful. Um, but we put the area, put it in the area to increase a little bit of inflammatory response so that your body can finish the healing. Remember we talked about that. So again, it's not a lot of money to be had in the insurance. So honestly, at the end of the day, I think it comes down to, can they make a lot of money off of it? Not really. So the, the pricing though is, is like you said, um, just to make that clear for some people who didn't, uh, who just joined us is that the, um, the pricing varies depending on the region, um, but it's based off of really how much it costs for the for the the services itself and like the product and so on and so forth uh, to get it. All right, so hopefully that answered the question. And so if that's it, I'm gonna sign up, guys. You guys know me. I'm Dr. Zarina, also known as Dr. Z, your sports medicine integrated pain management physician, here to help you rebound your health and ultimately obtain your pain freedom through my concierge practice, my medical practice, my coaching programs, authoring, speaking engagements, and platforms just like this to help you get to your next. Don't forget, please 
Find us on the MVP Lifestyle on Facebook. It's a closed group for really those who are really trying to become the most valuable person in their life. Find us there. I'll put a link below as well how you can reach me on a one-on-one -on -one discovery session just for you, you and I to get you to your next. I can introduce you to the ways and wows that how can help you get that long-term pain freedom. Love you guys. Thanks for joining me. Please click share this information for those who may didn't get to um, join us tonight. I hope and pray that this information will be helpful to somebody. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Y'all have a blessed one. Great night. And I'll see you guys next week.